Now then, and welcome back to Rare Eddie One Talks podcast. I'm your host, Rare Eddie One, and welcome. So tonight's show, tonight's podcast is going to be different from last week's episode and previous episodes. I'm going to be concentrating on one topic and one topic only. I may do, I may throw in at the, at the end of tonight's show um, my top 10 dirty, naughty conspiracies, but that's going to be at the end of the show. Tonight's show, we are, with it being October, I'm going to be concentrating on all things spooky and all things creepy and demonic and ghostly and uh, see if we can get any ectoplasm up here. You know, uh, hopefully not. Hopefully not. But who knows where this show is going to take us. But tonight's show, future rare anyone here. And I don't, sorry, I don't have lottery numbers for you guys i i do apologize but i do have a disclaimer i do have to put a warning because tonight's episode it touches on some sensitive topics from um sexual violence to suicide um so just a warning for you guys it i only touch on sexual violence uh, but you know it's still serious and it's still a very serious topic um but anyway Future Air anyone, I've got to go back. I've got to go back to the future. I've got to catch the DeLorean at 88 miles an hour. I will see you in a minute. I am going to be looking at the exorcism of Maurice Fureau. And this kid, this man, had a fucking wild story, a wild life, a hard, a hard life. A very very hard life, and we are going to have a look at it. I'm gonna we're going to go through the story, and then I'm going to give my opinion. My, I'm going to give my review um, of the story of uh, the supposedly exorcism, the supposedly exorcism that ends in bloodshed. Whose blood? Obviously, Maurice. Um, but we're going to have a look at it. Spoilers, it's Maurice. Um, but we're going to have a look at it. First off, I'm a slightly drunk. And uh, I'm going to continue the drinking. And I'm going to have, have myself. It's not the first time I've had this on the show. And I'm definitely not sponsored. I'm not sponsored. I just really like this drink. It's Brothers Cider. And it's Raspberry Ripple Flavor. English Cider. It's... It's four percent, so it's not going to get me pissed. Um, but I've had this before; it is absolutely delicious. If you're in the UK, get yourself some Brothers, get yourself some Raspberry Ripple. It's it tastes like Raspberry Ripple. Anyway, I'm going to get this open, and we're going to get this show on the road. So, cheers for all you guys out there. Hopefully. I hope you can join me with having a drink if you if you can if you're at work if you if you're driving or you're biking or you 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 can't have a drink. I hope you've got a, a nice cold glass of pop, milk, water, even a cup of tea. Do you have a rich tea with your tea or do you go for something a little bit fancier? Do you have a digestive or would one go for a chocolate hobnob? Or could you be really crazy and have a Jaffa cake? Anyway, let's get into tonight's show. Maurice Ferro. Cheers. It really is nice. It really is nice. For all you guys listening... For all you guys listening, I do film film these as well, and I put them up on my YouTube and Rumble channel. If you really want to check me out, I, I obviously, why wouldn't you want to check me out? Um, <laughs> a joke. Um, if you want to check me out, go subscribe to my YouTube and Rumble channel. My Facebook is Aliens of Scunny. Please, you know, we can build a. a a fellowship we could build a community on there we can chat we can bollocks we can bullshit we can do all that stuff on there and uh, if you want to get in contact with me all my contact details are in the show notes so please get in contact with me for all you watching i'm going to put myself in a little corner you know what corner i'm going to put myself into let's go get on 
So we have a pariah paranormal. And this is the possession of Maurice Fulot. Fulot, a troubled childhood and even stranger adulthood. Maurice Frenchy Fulot was the subject of of the book Satan's Harvest by Ed and Lorraine Warren for Warren's yet again. Noted parapsychology investigators and demonologists, they witnessed his possession as well as the Catholic as well as his Catholic exorcism. All by all accounts, Maurice had a miserable childhood at the hands of his cruel father. Maurice was worked harder on the farm, harder on the farm than a child stand, standing could support. So, Maurice was the eldest of 15 um, children, and his father was a horrible, horrible man. He was forced to quit school by third grade. Maurice prayed for salvation, and it seemed to have come to him in unusual ways maurice found himself growing physically stronger and stronger he began to know things that he could not account for now could his praying for salvation could that have been for could that have opened up for something nefarious could that have opened up for something demonic could that have opened up for something something cruel as he grew older he witnessed a obscene act in the family barn involving a animal and his father caught spying his father forced him to participate as well so I have heard, I have read why he was spying on his father. He was obsessed with learning to, because Frenchie, Maurice, would get beaten on a daily basis because he was constantly um, messing up, um, ruining stuff. He was constantly getting himself into trouble. So uh, he was constantly learning trying to make sure he wasn't going to get a beating that day and this is why he was spying on his father he got caught so i guess he wish he wasn't spying and i guess he wish he'd maybe gone for an earlier bed that night but he got caught and his father was doing something some unsavory things to animals or could it have been a demon he got caught spying on his father doing unearthly things to poor innocent animals and he was made Frenchie was made to participate in this on a daily basis I have read um, so I'll continue the exact details of these events were too disturbing for Maurice to specify the harshness of his childhood childhood and stranger proclivities of his father are certainly enough to cause mental illness in any child and a young adult. Now, after drifting around New England for some years, Maurice finally settled down with a young bride on a family farm in a western Massachusetts Massachusetts town here he led a normal life and was considered a kind man by his neighbors then Maurice began losing chunks of time from his memory and small fires began erupting across the farm these little fires brought the brought Maurice and his family and his family farm in to the attention of local for law enforcement so this is where it gets fucking dark and horrible and I, I certainly don't feel for Maurice at this time it's very disturbing so if you have a weak stomach if this this is very disturbing it doesn't go too into detail but it's here 
It is no surprise to us, given his background, that Frenchie ultimately committed several outrageous crimes, including rape of a minor child, attempted murder of his wife, and a ultimate and ultimately suiciding himself. I don't I don't feel sorry for the geezer. Yes, he had a horrible childhood. Yes. Yes, that had all led up to that, but that that one, you know, a fucking child, for fuck's sake, you sick cunt. Oh, I promised myself I wasn't going to say that word, but that, I'm going to accept that word for that day. Um, but let's, let's continue, because that's very fucking horrible. Did Frenchie have a psychosis, perhaps multiple personal disorder, personality disorder that allowed him to be a kind, gentle man one moment and a psychotic killer the next? This might explain the lapses in time he experienced, as well as the lack of intelligence of events he must have been either involved in or witness to so this fucking this Maurice fellow is a fucking he's had a hard fucking sad childhood but what he did to that that child was it's no excuse um, yes that childhood could have led him to a mental health breakdown a mental hill mental illness um, per perhaps multiple personal personality disorder, yes. Yet there were even more disturbing occurrences in the Maurice's life, witnessed by law enforcement, clergy, and the Warrens that defy explanation. Among the many odd occurrences on the farm, on their farm during the heights of his possession. Maurice would bleed from his eyes, mouth, in a twisted sort of demonic stigmata, stigmata, which was documented by multiple witnesses. The cause of the bleeding could not be determined once it, it had ceased. There was no evidence of open wounds or sources or sores. Maurice also possessed incredible physical strength, which he had enjoyed since childhood. Fucking enjoyed. He could lift 300, 400 pound objects with apparent ease, while other men strained to even budge these the same objects. Most particular of all was Maurice's ability to be two places at once numerous witnesses testified to the fact that they had seen maurice in one area perhaps his study then a short time later a greater it at a greater distance than they could have imagined him traveling in that short span of time checking at the back Checking back at his original location, they found he was still there and with no one, no knowledge of having left the room. Doppelgangers, translated from German literally as double walker, are associated in paranormal law as being harbing, harbingers of bad luck. It was this strange phenomenon that caused the family to reach to the Warrens for an explanation. So, I have read that Maurice was in his study and his wife had seen him in his study and then she, she'd gone downstairs to do something else or gone to another room to do something else. And Maurice had walked through and was... Or Maurice was doing something in another room. She, or she saw Maurice walk into another room and doing something else. And 
she didn't think nothing of it and then she went back to the study i assume it would be upstairs but she went back to the study and maurice was still sat there and as she asked you were just in you know in the utility room for maybe example and he's no one I've, I've always been here but that was like just like that he, there's no way he could have got past her to you know get in there and, and you know there's no way he could have gone round her or or gone down into that room without her knowledge um just strange uh, occurrences like that happen quite a lot and it wasn't just witnessed by his wife it was witnessed by law enforcement friends family um yeah so what we'll, we'll continue their investigation is chronicled in their book satan's harvest ultimately they the warrens believe maurice was under demonic possession and they arranged for an exorcism to be performed at his farm now i don't think this article will go into it so so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna get into it now before i go any further and then i'll probably go further and it'll be in the article but we'll we'll deal with that in a minute so a family friend of maurice and the throughout family came he was a good old canadian boy he came and and at this time he um old frenchy was getting popular he was you know starting to get you know in the news and uh, so the family friend decided to pay old frenchy a, a visit and you know just to check in and, and that and he also had a bottle of holy water and he went to try and give the bottle of holy water to maurice and maurice frenchy um didn't want it and his wife said you know it is giving you a gift you know you, you take the gift and he's like i don't want it i don't want it and uh she was like no you you gotta have it and he's like no i don't want it now i, I don't want it and uh, so he decided to or she decided to take the bottle of holy water and and sprinkle some of it on it and that was it the whole hell broke loose he contorted he would he went into a horrible weird pos possession sort of thing i guess and uh that that was witnessed by both of them and it was just very strange and and holy water did that to him could that be just him reacting to clean water i don't know <laughs> dirty bastard um so we'll continue in the in this video of his because there is a video out there of his exorcism which will be in i have a little video of it um it it's not a great video um i have the pictures up as well but it's it's not it's not great um it's not scary if you if you're thinking it, it no it, it's nothing really in the video of his, of his exorcism you'll see large raised bumps traveling traveling under his skin on his arms and his and a, a bloody crack opened in his forehead which heals by the end of the exorcism also you will see maurice respond responding to some of the exorcist questions in latin a dead language which he had no training he as again the is instances of, of, of Maurice Frenchy uh, talking in backwards Latin. It, there's no way he should be knowing Latin. I'm going to have a quick look of the picture they are on about. Um, sorry, it keeps. So it's not the greatest picture, but the the you the video is not the greatest video his face looks messed up it looks like there is a little crack or looks like some blemish down one down the left side of his head and there's there is some bumps some you know you know some bumpy area on on his your know, cheekbone around here his lips look 
his lips look actually like they've been they've, they're maybe sewn together his eyes look very strange as well but this is you've got to be face you've got to face this it, this is old video equipment the video doesn't look great as, as it is could this just be a really really bad piece of equipment quite possibly let's let's get back to the the article itself maurice was determined to be free of the demonic following the exorcism that doesn't really make sense maurice was was hoping to be free from the demonic forces and um, following the exorcism and for several years seemed a seemed to be a normal family man returning to the kind gentleman people had referred to as Frenchy, according to family and witnesses the demonic returned with a tragic a tragic consequences in what was best described as a psychotic rage maurice shot and wounded his wife blowing off her arm with a shot from the 12 gauge shotgun as she attempted to escape from him then after wounding her dragged her back into their home it seemed to her that he intended to take her life then after a prolonged struggle with himself he turned the shotgun on himself and ended his own life and she said amen so that's exactly well that's not exactly but french's father did pretty much the same thing to his mother french's father killed his mother and then turned the gun on himself and killed himself and did frenchy break the cycle quite possibly um we can certainly suspect mental illness as the soft source of maurice is strange behavior and ultimately demise however many witnesses attested to the paranormal occurrences surrounding maurice existence in the last year of his life did his childhood prayers for strength and salvation inadvertently make a pact with the demonic but his story is terrifying maurice's story qualifies with three of the requisites a sign of demonic possession and in fact a catholic sanctioned exorcism ultimately occurred maurice possessed hum superhuman phys uh, physical strength he possessed hidden knowledge of people and events he spoke in latin during his exorcism inexplicable physical phenomenon such as bleeding from his eyes and mouth doppelgangers witnessed by multiple neighbors so all that was deemed to be by the catholic church that he he could have been uh, he he could have the exorcism so my thoughts on this on this unfortunate with that with that horrible thing what i read earlier with what he did to a minor i find it hard to feel anything for this man i find it hard i really do um but there's no doubt he had a horrible bringing up he had and could that have caused a mental break could that have caused a ptsd um outrage when he was older or was he going to ultimately go down the the, the way of his father um by ending his wife and his his self um it's it's a very sad story um horrible story it's a very um it's a fucking horrible story um 
do I think he was demonically possessed? Yeah, especially with, you know, with people witnessing that he had physical strength, he had doppelgangers, um, speaking Latin during the, during the, um, the exorcism. Um, you you can see you know, with the picture, it, it, it doesn't look right. If For you guys who are listening, it, it doesn't look right. He, he looks... There is There does look like there's maybe a crack down the side of his face, the left side of his face with like little bumps. His mouth does look like it's been sewn. Um, but again, this is old equipment, and old equipment does fuck up. And old, like I say, old equipment does fuck up. It's... <laughs> And, and not only that, the Warrens had that were involved. Now, I I would like to believe that the Warrens uh, I would like to believe the Warrens, but let's face it, they they monetized from this, yeah, you know, with their book. Um, it's not to say that the Maurice wasn't you know possessed. It could he have been possessed by his evil um, father? Possibly. Did what his father uh, make him do when he was a child? Um, did that just really, really fuck this kid up? Again, I have no feelings towards this man. Um, he caused a lot of anguish to... to to people around him. And ultimately he met his own demise. Um, it's, it's a fucking hard, hard story. But I'm going to quickly play. Um, so the video, I not one of the videos I, I watched for this. Um, the start of this, so... I'm, I'm going to have to mute it. But this is the extraordinary. And there's a guy, I'm not sure who it is, um, is talking. And this is just brilliant. Is it sat in a dark room? He gets a, a, a match. He lights it and he lights a candle. <laughs> and then lights the other candle. So his candle lit. <laughs> the lighting's fucking. It's still terrible. It looks so cringe. It looks fucking cringe as fuck. But oh, it's it's not a bad little documentary. Um, for the time, I guess that would maybe put the shivers up quite a few people. Um, but it it was very cringe, very cringe. Um, but anyway, let's so. Let's go back because I've just gone back to the pictures and the the Warrens did monetize from this this um, situation and did the did the Fero family monet well not Maurice but did his family monetize from this situation? Yes, his wife lost an arm, but did they monetize from from this situation? Uh, who knows? Uh, could this just be a man that just gone through such a mental breakdown and nothing was safe in his path. Nothing. Nothing at all was safe in his path. Could he have... Because they have said that he he, he had got physically stronger, his, his strength had got up. That's not necessarily a... A demonic or a possession thing he could have just gotten physically stronger could he got faster could he have gone from room to room just like that could he could that be a possibility my thoughts so let me get to my thoughts on this <sighs> I don't think he was possessed uh, by anything demonic it's a fucking horrible story fucked up story if you ask me but I don't think he was possessed I think he had a mental breakdown um, he, he was he could have been suffering from um, multiple personality disorder 
it, it broke. It broke him and it broke people around him. Um, but then again, he was talking Latin. But again, there's there's cases out there with people with multiple personality disorder knowing stuff that they shouldn't be knowing. So is that a possibility? And it goes back and forth and back and forth. Well, just choose one. Yes. I'm on the fence. Right. I'm on the fence with this one now. I'm on the fence with this one. I would have to read more into it, but I don't want to. Um, Because, again, I have no feelings towards this man. He... A horrible thing he did to a minor. I don't know if I'll have to take that out of the show. I'm not sure. I'm before. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to take that out of the show. So it's it's just hard to feel anything for this man. Hard. It's just hard. Um, yeah, he, he could have been the fucking sweetest man of them all. It doesn't take away from the fact what he what he did. And it's just fucking, it's just hard. It's just hard. But I am on the fence. Could he have been demonically possessed? Yes, because he had done some fucked up things. Um, he had seen some fucked up things. And did he, you know, his praying for salvation definitely opens up for something. Open a doorway to something evil you know something he, he shouldn't have opened and did not close um because with neighbors witnessing you know the latin you know you know from the catholic church law enforcement bleeding from the eyes and mouth you know, physical strength hidden knowledge you know doppelgangers yeah that it just all brings it it all brings, you know, I'm on the fence. I will. This will probably be the last time I touch on the subject of Maurice Furo. Now, if you really want me to go deep dive in this topic, let me know. But if you don't let me know, I'm, that's the last I'm going to touch on Maurice Furo. Um, very very sad story but it's a sad story but i don't feel sad because of what he did to a minor i don't feel sad at all um um and at the end of the day he did something horrible to someone innocent and i can't get past it i can't get past it and i won't get past it that's the possession of Maurice Furo. Horrible childhood, horrible life, horrible end. Uh, nothing good at all. Uh, I'm going to try and lighten up um, the end of this show. And I'm going to continue my top 10 of dirty slash naughty conspiracies that they are not dirty and they are not naughty. So we are at number four. The FBI starts Reddit conspiracy threads. <laughs> so this list is from Reddit. And it's Reddit's top ten conspiracy theories that may be true. Now this article is from Watch Mojo, And the only reason I watch Watch Mojo is because of Rebecca Bryant. Absolute beautiful woman. A gorgeous, absolute gorgeous voice on her. And when I read these, it's her head. It's her, her head. It's her voice in my head. But we are at number four. The FBI starts Reddit conspiracy threads. One of the most meta Reddit theories out there posits that government agencies such as as the FBI are actually the ones who start Reddit conspiracy threads. In this way, the 
agencies are able to better keep track of what the public knows but can't prove or else they use these threads to discredit some theories by making those that believe in them seem like they're unhinged. Unhinged? This kind of thing has the apparent appearance of being believable because they because of how easy it would be for agencies to use this method for both information gathering and disinformation hmm. definitely interesting and i wouldn't put it past the the government agencies to you know actually be the 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 ones that put out these threads i wouldn't put it past it i wouldn't put it past them um definitely want to have a look at um um to go a, a good rabbit hole to go down um and I, I will have a good rabbit hole to go down so that's my episode of maddie's the possession of maurice furrow um definitely on the fence on that one horrible hat horrible had fucked up story had had start of his life had middle life had end of his life had to everyone around him had on every person that may be involved in the story it only mainly really seemed it only seems that the warrens monetized from this situation and it's just definitely fucked up now what are your thoughts on this possession is it demonic could it be demonic could it be a mental illness that just broke could he have a mental illness that just fucking broke him and broke everyone around him let me know your thoughts let me know your thoughts about the new way i'm doing these shows if you if you want me to go back to the old way of doing it let me know because i'm more than happy to do that but i'm happy to continue doing one topic maybe a bonus little topic at the end just to lighten the uh, light in the air um but i'm gonna continue just concentrating on one topic i will get better at this um the more i do these the more i will get better i promise you that um i put more um research um i just have to get better at putting it down on I, I would be horrible with a script but I could maybe have myself some little bullet points the more I do these I will continue to improve I will have more hopefully a better production for you guys um, definitely more work uh, going into it a more thought out a more planned attempt of the shows you know and I definitely I hope to improve i i can see little improvements and i will improve the more i do it is the more it will get better let me know if you want to be involved in the show if you want to send me topics send them to to me on facebook email twitter e uh, youtube you know send them to me and i will look into every topic you send them to me um but there's in October, there's so many fucked up cases I'm going to be looking at. Films and, and all that all that good stuff. And I will look at for you guys and for me. And because I enjoy this for myself. And that's important to me. Is that I'm enjoying doing these. If, if you are listening to these, please follow. Or I'm pretty sure on most of, of all podcast uh, providers, it's follow. Um, please write me a review um that would be awesome i will probably try and read them reviews out you know good bad ugly i will i'll quite possibly read them out um please don't put big words in them um i will yeah um if you want to send me your thoughts please do if you would want to be involved in this in the show you know maybe guest appear um 
be a co-host, let me know. I, I'm all for that. But again, I'm more than happy to solo these. More than happy to solo these because I, I, I love it. I'm finding newer ways of editing and, you know, talking and, and researching stuff. And it's just so much fun for me. Thumbnails, I, I just love it all. Um, tonight has been a hard, a hard case to go over. It has. And it sort of sucked the life out of me. But I still enjoyed doing it. Hard topic, I know. So if you are watching these on YouTube, Rumble, TikTok, whatever, please, please, please leave me a like. Or if you f please think about subscribing to me, that would be awesome. That would be fucking awesome. You guys are a legend. I've been Rarity One. This has been Rarity One Talks Podcast. I will see you next week. Stay rude. Stay dirty. More importantly, stay naughty. Peace. <laughs>